Hi and welcome back to another video of JPlay. I am Marcus and today I want to walk you through a couple of rounds of Knights of Fire Battle for Budapest, which is pretty much the sequel to Days of Ire and also deals with the Russian or Soviet occupation of Budapest back in the 50s. And this one is soon to launch on Kickstarter and today I want to yeah, basically show you the solo rules of this game. This game comes really with three modes, so you can play it solo, you can play it cooperatively and you can also play it as a team game where one side is playing the Hungarian, yeah, pretty much resistance cell, where on the other hand we have the Soviet player who yeah, basically tries to conquer or occupate Budapest. Okay, let's see how this one works out. Okay, here I prepared the board for the basically one or two player game. The difference is not really that big. The only change is in respect to those revolutionary cards, which come with this two player symbol here or no symbol at all. In a one player game, you shuffle all the cards together. In a two player game, apparently one player gets all the cards with a two player item and player one of them pretty much get the cards with no symbol at all. But again, we are playing with all the cards as I'm playing alone. There are also some differences in respect to passing because one player can pretty much pass for the other player. But yeah, as I'm playing alone, this won't happen as well. And there is also one additional action that you can take in a two revolution two revolutionary players game only. But this is then also true for the, let's say, cooperative version of the game or also with a competitive mode. The main goal of the revolutionary players is pretty much to bring down the Soviet prestige down, ideally to zero, because this would lead to a grand Hungarian victory. And of course, this has to happen before the Hungarian side has to surrender. There is a forced surrender, but there's also a voluntary surrender. Maybe I will come to that a little bit later on. And on top of this, the revolutionary side can also win if time runs out and there still has to be an insurgent left on the board. Here's one one of those green guys here right now it really looks like a lot of those insurgents but believe me those will go down like flies sooner or later those two win conditions were pretty much the grand win conditions for the revolutionary side but there is also a normal winning condition for the hungarian player when the hungarian side has to surrender either forced or voluntarily you do some let's call it final scoring in this case in most cases the russian or soviet side would also lose some more prestige points if you would then manage to bring it down to zero morale then it would be a normal victory for the revolutionary player but if the let's say prestige is left to four from one to three on the for the soviet side then it's a normal victory or a yeah, normal soviet victory but it's four or more then we would also speak of a grand soviet victory and this is really something that you really try to avoid in this game at least if you're playing for the revolutionary side of course when playing solo or cooperatively, you play with those so-called General Konev tactic cards here. So they are pretty much AI cards. And if you watch some of my other videos, I really suck at interpreting those AI cards. So expect me to do some very stupid or wrong decisions. But the idea of this video is pretty much to give you an overview of how this game actually feels like and really doesn't want to, or I don't really want to try to teach you the game properly. The setup for those insurgents here, those are the green cubes here, was done randomly. The same is true for those civilian counters here. This pretty much those values help me to reduce the prestige at the end of the game if we are talking about a normal revolutionary victory or a Soviet victory. So I really want to try to get as many high numbers as possible to this flat civilians section up there because this would then help me to bring down the Soviet prestige points. Keep in mind, everything that you see here is a prototype. The components already look pretty nice, but there are some, let's say, changes expected in respect to the board design. I think they're talking about making some of those areas a little bit bigger. Of course, some of the cards are not cut out properly, stuff like that. But apart from that, this game already looks very, very nice. 
Let's get cracking. We start each round with a so-called draw phase for the revolutionary side. So if our morale is still 19 or higher, we would be allowed to draw 12 cards. Later on, it, this will happen if the morale is below 90, we would only be allowed to draw 8 cards. Usually really try to play all the cards in a given round because you want to do as much as possible. The hand size is always 12, so if you have cards left over from the last round and you have then more than 12 cards in the and you are allowed to discard down to just 12. So I will now draw our 12 cards and here we see our starting hand. When looking at those cards who look pretty nice already, two, let's say, informations are important. One is the number up here, the higher the better, and the second one are those symbols here. Some of the actions you can do pretty much with any cards, but for some actions you need, let's say, a card with a specific icon. So if you want to assault, for example, a Russian garrison or a Russian division, then you would have to use this Molotov cocktail symbol here. If you want to build a barricade, for example, you need this barricade symbol on one of those cards. But I will come to that when we are going through all of those actions. Next, we come to the tactics phase. I already prepared the tactics cards or the AI cards for General Konev here. And it's always the same that the first, the third and the fifth card are pretty much face up. So we kind of know what is going to happen throughout the round. Two of those cards are face down. So we will roll for the dice, which card will get activated first. And from what we see here, we may be able to do some more or less informed decisions. Next, we would normally go into the reinforcement phase. There we would use cards with this symbol here, but this is not allowed or we are not doing this in the first round of the game. And this reinforcement phase gives us the opportunity to gain our, let's say, reinforcement insurgent cubes on the board. When we are losing those insurgents throughout the game, they're really removed from the game, so back into the box and yeah, never to be seen again in this session at least, which is pretty much like War of the Ring if you're playing for the free people who really don't want to lose your troops because they're really gone for good. Then it's time to move into the operations phase where we start playing those cards. The revolutionary side always goes first. We have to play at least one, two, three cards when playing alone. Apparently you are doing all the decisions. If you're playing with two revolutionary players, then turn pretty much goes back and forth. But in between there is always the AI player. So whatever player A goes first, then it's the AI player, then it's player B, then again it's the AI player going back to player one and so on. I've already spotted a hunt card within the tactic cards for General Konev here. And hunt usually means they are trying to arrest someone. And I think in this case, it might be a good idea to bring this civilian here into freedom or try to rescue those civilians. It's only a value one civilian, but it's better than nothing. Let me show you this. So I think it may be a good idea to help those civilians to flee to the Austrian border. How are we going to do that? That's actually pretty simple. The base cost for this, let's say, operation or action is six. You can then subtract the number of insurgents that are in the same district as the civilians you want to help. In this case, we have two insurgents in that area, so we would reduce it by two, which would bring us to four points we would have to spend. In this case, there is no particular icon we would have to play. We also have to come up with the value. And we can play one to three cards pretty much. So in this case, I think I will go for those two cards here. This would normally help to do a counterattack, but counterattacks can also be pretty, um, or you basically don't want to get to a situation where you have to have a counterattack. So I think in this case, we should be okay. So let's simply discard those two cards worth four points and this will pretty much help us to get those civilians to the Austrian border. When playing this game competitively, so if you have one active Soviet player, all of those chips are pretty much face down. So the Russia or Soviet side doesn't really know what values of civilians the revolutionary side already has uh, managed to escape from Budapest in this case. But as we are playing alone or cooperatively, we can also 
as might as well leave this open. That's our first point. This was our first action. And then it's the first turn for General Konev, so the AI player here. So we would roll a die and would trigger the uh, core or appropriate card that's tied to those tokens here. I really selected to rescue this civilian because this hunt card would be triggered on a five or a six. So in this case, the chances were pretty good that we would lose this civilian right out, right from the bat. This is card number two. So let's reveal this card. This counter goes to the left side. So this card will not be triggered on a one or a two. If we cannot go to the left, it will go to the right. But in this case, it can go to the left. And here we found a pretty nasty card already. Probe. First of all, we would increase the readiness by one and then we would repeat the following three times. Let's first increase the readiness. The readiness shows us how aggressive the Soviet player is when we are going to attack him. When we do a normal open attack, the Soviet player would always, um, let's say, fire back at us. And the higher this readiness number is, the more likely it is that we would lose one of our insurgents or get him wounded. And then we would select the district with the most insurgents on the board. Tiebreak goes for threat. Threat is mainly determined by how many civilians there are, then how many insurgents there are. And though there's a whole, let's say, priority chart which you can follow in this case, I think it will be relatively easy. Then we would move one adjacent regiment into the district if necessary, and then we would inflict one damage there, plus one if readiness is five or higher. Good thing is readiness is currently only at four. But first of all, we would have to determine which district has the highest um, threat. More or less all of those districts have two insurgents. You see that for yourself. The next thing that you would check then, or the first thing for threat de determination is where what district has the highest civilian marker. Right now, those are those three districts here. And all of them have an active regiment basically next to it. So they can turn um, anywhere. Then you would check for this, um, I think it's the objective areas. All of those areas also have the objective star. So this is also clearly a type. In this case, we would simply roll a die. Let's say this is one to two, three to four, five to six. And again, I really hope I'm doing this correctly, but this is how I understand it in this case. And in this case, this regiment here would move into this district here. Yeah, and then we would inflict one damage there. Right now, both of our insurgents are hidden, and this is determined by this upright position here. Normally, you would have the Soviet player basically on the other side of the table, so he would only look at the back side, so he wouldn't see those things. Once those guys are revealed, you would basically lay them on the board flat like this, so all of the players would see see what um, unit or insurgent that is. In this case, they're both hidden, so I get to choose who gets the wound. And I think in this case, we will assign the wound token to this so-called local here. The locals always have two symbols which they can use, but they are not allowed to move. And right now, I think it's really important to have, let's say, movable units. So those are so-called fighters. They're both insurgent, but those are fighters. Those are uh, locals. Each insurgent can take up to one wound before it is basically removed from the game. The problem is we still have to run through this card two more times, as it said here in bold. So again, we would select the district with the most insurgents on the board. Again, we have a time, but this time it's only those two districts here because one of the tiebreakers for this threat determination is the fewest amount of regiments. Right now, this district has a regiment. Though the Soviet player is not too keen to send more troops into there. So it's either this district or that district up there. So this is now one, two, three. This is four, two, six. And this is now one, two, three, pretty much this district here. Again, we have a regiment adjacent to this. So this second guards mechanized division will now move into district number six. And again, we have to assign a wound. But I think this time we really want to protect this particular insurgency with Hestis AK-47, though the Kalashnikov and the barricade symbol. It's still a local, so it cannot move. 
but it's really this symbol is really important especially when playing with the so-called advanced rules and maybe i should have mentioned it that i'm playing this soul with advanced mode there's also a basic cooperative mode but the advanced mode is definitely more fun so let's assign this wound to this yeah, guy with a molotov cocktail here and then we would move back to our probe card here because we have to do that again again we would select the district with the highest threat right now it's tied between those two districts again because again we have a regiment here so the, again the soviet player is pretty much happy that he sent some divisions up there so in this case again we would roll the die in this case one two three four two six we already know the drill in this case this district district will be chosen this time we have to move the 33rd guards make a nice division into district number 5a because those divisions will never cross the divisional border here so the second make a nice guard will not move into the territory of the 33rd guards in this case but we soviet player has a regiment down there or adjacent there too so in this case this guy will move into district number 5a and again we get to choose which insurgents gets the wound and i think in this case we can go for this Molotov guide here because he's also great for doing a defy action later on. Then we can simply discard this probe card here and then we go back to the revolutionary player and I really think we should help some more civilians to flee. Let's go for it. So again I will play a two and a two in this case. So that's pretty much four points worth of yeah, escape points. And before I lose one of those guys here, I think we should really use him to help those civilians to escape because I was really not thinking straight, to be honest. I was helping this one escape, but of course there was also a regiment adjacent right next to those guys here. So let's totally help those guys. We have two insurgent in the same district so six minus two is four we would spend four points so we can now help those civilians to escape to the austrian border up there back to the soviet player let's roll the die that's the six and in this case we will see the hunt so oh man this was really a pity it's really bad that this hunt card showed up that early in the game and so again we would select the highest threat district on the map with an active regiment present or adjacent to it and in this case it's either this district or that district because right now or the first thing that matters is the civilian counter that's present on the board right now only those two two counters remain on the board then we would go down in search and it's pretty much the same but here we see fewer regiments so he will totally choose this space here so we would move the second guard mechanized division back to district 5b and unfortunately a rest is possible so we would choose one or the first option that is possible here arrest is possible because all of our insurgents are currently hidden so they cannot help those guys to whatever flee or hide themselves so we would now arrest this counter here and this is now really gone for good that's really 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 bad so those poor guys are now arrested by the soviet side on the board luckily they are not killed in this case but still they are pretty much gone for good and we would can lose morale so the more counters we have here the more morale we will use you lose by the end of this turn but there is a small bonus here because after the arrest we are allowed to decrease the readiness by three the problem now is we will repeat the entire card once again we will choose the highest third district in this case that's clearly this district here on the board and i should really have disabled that regiment up there this was really 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 a very stupid move by me but yeah that's how you learn this game as well so again we would move the regiment here into district number six arrest is still possible so we will arrest those civilians as well but then this hunt card is gone it may come back in the next round though then it's back to us and i think we really want to build a barricade we would spend this card here because building a barricade requires you to spend at least one of the cards with a barricade symbol on it so in this case we will go for this card here so let's yeah, discard it and this allows me to build barricade in a district where i have one of those guys that show the barricade um 
symbol here as well. This logo can be able to barricade the cost for it is one, the base price is always one, plus the number of active regiments in the space. In this case, we have one active regiment. So in this case, it will cost us our two points to build the barricade here in district number six. And then we would have to reveal the insurgent that we used in order to build that barricade. If he would have done that before, revealed this guy, then this civilians here would have been saved. And again, I was not really thinking straight. The problem is we had all those two counters very much adjacent to each other. And yeah, the hunt card simply came up too soon in the game. Okay, coming back to the Konev player, what will he do next? Okay, we would now reveal this card here. Those counters would all move to the left in this case. So let's reveal the card. And this is another really, really bad card. If it is a day round, and right now it is, we see that here. So basically the 4th of November consists of two day rounds and one night round. So in this case, we are dealing with a day round. We would select the district with the most insurgents in each sector that has at least one active regiment. Inflict damage equal to the number of active regiments there, plus two, and an additional plus one if readiness is three or higher. And actually here we dodged a bullet because I nearly forgot that the second arrest also decreased the readiness down to two. Wow, okay, really glad I caught this. But still, this is really a terrible, terrible card. In each sector, we would now determine one district with at least one active regiment, and then we would inflict damage equal to the number of act active regiment there plus two. So that's three wounds in each of the cases. And right now, all of those sectors pretty much have exactly one district with an active regiment in it and the barricade doesn't help us a bit if i'm not mistaken this case yeah that's the case wow this was really devastating for us so let's start with a sector up here the second guard what is it mechanized division up there here we have one plus two that's three points worth of damage this guy already has a wound the first wound usually goes there for those um, let's say insurgents that are no longer hidden or revealed in this case but you would really start with the insurgents that are wounded so this guy would take the second hit which pretty much kills him he also goes to the killed insurgents arrested civilians box this guy now also takes the remaining two hits so he's also killed wow what a bad card for us here we do pretty much the same thing this guy is dead right from the bad this guy takes two wounds also dead and the problem is none of those guys has the counter-attack symbol on it so we are not even allowed to throw a molotov cocktail back at those guys but we are still not done yet because this sector or this district here in this sector will also be affected so again we would have to distribute three wounds in total and i think we will assign two Two wounds here so this would in theory kill this guy this guy would only take one wound but before he's removed from the board he can still use his counter attack ability here but in order to do that we still have to discard cards worth of three and at least one of those cards has to show this counter attack symbol in this case i will simply go for this single card here yeah we would lose a barricade symbol we still have enough barricade symbols anyway so we will discard this card and this would now allow us to disable this 128th guards rifle division up there in the 11th district here we would never remove those counts so once they are on the board and the same is true for those garrison tokens that will show up sooner or later as well we can only ever disable them but we can never ever remove them from the board once they are placed but right now those guys are inactive which is kind of a good thing but this guy has been killed anyway and yeah we can simply can get rid of those two wound tokens unfortunately we are not getting any momentum and momentum is also a great way for us to reduce the prestige um, down by the end of this round but in this case it was simply a counter attack but yeah i think it may still have been worth it then this card is done so let's remove it to the discard pile for now again it may show up sooner or later again and then it's back to us and i think i want to move this time yeah let's go for it so let's spend simply two points so pretty much doesn't really matter which symbols that are on the card so we'll 
this card, this card. This gives us pretty much two movement points. So I will move this guy here into this district. He stays hidden. And I think I will also move this guy also closer to the action down there in the more southern part of Budapest. This was already my move action. The Konev player only has two more cards left. Let's see which goes first. And in this case, it's the Activate Second Guards Mechanized Division. This was pretty likely anyway. And this is only true now for the second guards mechanized division, by the way. So we would rarely want disabled regiments into the sector if possible. Right now, there aren't any disabled. So we can skip this. Then for each previously active regiment in the sector right now, that's pretty much those three regiments up there. We would now do this command here and would go for the first option possible. Let's start with this guy up there, with this district up there. First of all, we would arrest right now there is no one to arrest so we can skip that if no garrison is present and district has objective i can place a garrison and yes that's what this guy will do then we come to this guy here right now he's still in the supply area here it's pretty much adjacent to this district but not really yet on the board let's put it like this again they cannot arrest here we are not placing any or there's no objective star here then if insurgent units present but no barricade also not the case in this case move to highest threat adjacent district in this case it's easily this district here those guys will also move down there and this was already this card here those cards is, are really something that you can deal with and so far we really had already so terrible cards out there next we have to really check the last remaining card the reorganized so they would rally a disabled garrison if possible pretty much reactivated right now there aren't any garrisons on the board then we would rally disabled regiment if possible and we do have a regiment or disabled regiment on the board there so they will flip over again but i think this will not really whatever make a difference for us but we really have to think if we want to really um let's say disable the garrison up there if this will really help us because in the end we get let's say prestige losses for the more disabled regiments that are currently on the board so this is really something which we have to think about if we want to do that but overall we can definitely also gain some kind of a bonus for units that are disabled on the board so again disabling units can be really something that you want to do but one step after the other I think first of all I want to move some of my folks so I think I need three movement points in total if i'm not mistaken so i will spend this card here with two movement points i will move this medic one two spaces up here into the parliament district and this wounded barricade builder will also move to this medic here in castle hill up there those were all of my action points and next we will simply do the reorganize card so there's nothing else to do we would rally a disabled garrison if possible right now it's not possible we would rally a disabled regiment if possible and that is possible at this point in time then we check if there are now three or more disabled units on the board right now there are no disabled unit on the board and last but not least we will increase the readiness by one so overall overall that's really the cards that we want to see more often and now Konath player is done so he has pretty much to pass whereas we can still play cards like crazy Okay, let's start up here. Now we want to ambush one of those second guards mechanized division regiments up there. Therefore, we need a card that shows this Molotov symbol here, and we need an insurgent that has this symbol here. So in this case, we will reveal this case. We will always need three points for that, and this now pretty much allows us to deactivate or disable this mechanized division up there. This was our first strike and on top of this we also gain one of those wound or momentum markers in this case and we can turn those counters in at the end of the turn two for one for one prestige point so if we gain one more of those discs we can turn it in for one prestige loss by the end of this turn which is really great next we will play this card for a movement command to move this insertion down here to radio free Kossuth which is Good. And then, of course, we want to do the same thing again. We want to play an ambush here. Three points. We have the proper symbol. We reveal our guy, though. Those guys are disabled as well. This gives us our second momentum token. And with our last card, we want to do an open attack. 
We can attack from any armed insurgent in the advanced version of the game. All of those insurgents are armed if they don't show this P stuff symbol up there. So we want to use this insurgent here. You always need three points so that you don't need a particular symbol in order to do an attack. So we'd reveal this guy here. We would now whatever disable doesn't really matter in this case. This um, regiment here but now with an open attack those guys will do fire back which means we would now roll the die again and this is a four which is cool because if the roll was greater than the current readiness which it is we would definitely do not take a wound but now the Soviet player are really yeah, aware of us and this means we have to increase the readiness by one space but overall it was a miss this was great but what's really important we now have three disabled units out on the board which will really help us for the next round but i will come to that in a second the good thing is we get another momentum for this open attack as well so right now it's not enough to decrease prestige by two but at least we will be able to decrease it by one at the end of this turn and right now we come to the end of the turn because we now also have to pass Konev player doesn't have any more cards left and so we come to the so-called adjustment phase and this is not something where you don't see some of the let's say things that come with a competitive or the advanced competitive version of this game because now this is this red backgrounded um, section here of the adjustment phase. we would do the headline adjustment so in the competitive game the Soviet player has to fulfill those headlines here in order not to get penalized really makes the life for the Soviet player much worse but unfortunately again in this case in the solo in the corporate version of the game we would see those headline adjustments next we would do the prestige readiness adjustment and hungarian surrender the first thing to do is to cash in those momentum tokens we would cash in two of those tokens in order to decrease the prestige down by one point not really great but yeah you have to start somewhere then we would check for a possible game end so if the prestige would not be on zero this would really mean okay the hungarian side the revolutionary side has achieved a grand victory but of course we are far from that at this point in time then we would be allowed to increase our morale by one point for for every third garrison that's disabled on the board right now we only have one single garrison on the board and that's not even disabled then we would do pretty much the same for active garrisons on the board so for every third active garrison on the board we would now decrease the revolutionary morale by one again we only have one garrison on the board so this is nothing we have to worry about the problem now really is that we also lose morale for every second counter or token that's in here in this kill box here so this is one loss of morale this is one loss of morale and this is one loss of morale so in total we just lost one two three points of our morale and this is really horrible but i already mentioned it we we now have three disabled unit units on the board and this can be either regiments and or garrisons and for every third disabled unit out on the board we are now allowed to remove two tactic cards out of the deck for the next round which is really great so let me have a quick look but of course i think i already have an idea and yes i will totally remove the assault card and the probe card out of the deck for the next round which is really kind of a small win this is really cool the remaining cards stay in the discard pile so they can come back throughout the next round but for now i think those three cards are pretty much okay compared to the other two and we have to rally all disabled units out on the board so we'll simply flip them back to the front side and now we can also hide our insurgents if we want to i think i will leave this guy here open because this allows us to keep this garrison under control so this doesn't count when it comes later on to count for every third garrison that's active on the board we would lose some morale so this guy has now this garrison under control while he's still let's say um, revealed but we will totally um, hide this guy here and i think i will also hide this guy here as well and i think that's pretty much it then we basically remove all but one of those counters here from the game doesn't really matter which one in an even case we would remove all of them in an odd case we would keep one of those so 
Again, this counts for how many morale we are going to lose, but all those other tokens are really gone for good. And then we would move into the next round and would start pretty much on the 4th of November in the afternoon. So again, let's go into the draw phase. Next, we would do the tactics phase. So let's build the Konev card. So we would now take three cards that are left from the remaining round. So in the draw pile, pretty much. And then we would shuffle in the discarded cards from the last round here as well. And now it's really cool that we remove two of the cards out of this pile. So we are pretty sure that Probe and Assault is no longer part of that deck. So let's play them here again. We would reveal the first, the third and the fifth card. And then we would move into the reinforcement step of the game. But I think this is something that I will do as part of my next episode of my walkthrough of Knights of Fire battle for Budapest. Keep in mind, this game is currently on Kickstarter, so check out the campaign. And of course, you will find a link to the campaign in the description of this video. And yeah, if you're interested, I will definitely record one more video relatively soon, I guess. So if you want to know more, if you want to see how some of the other mechanics in this game actually work, then stay tuned and check out episode two of my walkthrough of Knights of Fire. I will not do a full playthrough of this game here, but I think we with two videos, I should be able to show you most of the interesting stuff that Knights of Fire has to offer for you. Hope you enjoyed my first video here and hope to see you soon in one of my other videos. And yeah, until then, bye bye. <laughs>